Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform by all means don't miss the good life devotion any day now welcome to today's episode with dr david Bindon. well praise the lord hallelujah such a joy once again to welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite good life devotion Good life devotion, a daily devotional teaching of the truth of God's word that comes to us on many platforms. That means we're going to come to you on the same platform, same time tomorrow with Jesus Stories. The aim is to bring you truths of the kingdom that will help you to enjoy your life here on earth and in the days to come in eternity. Secondly, we bring you deeper teachings that are aimed at bringing you into maturity so you can attain to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and live on this earth as that son of God that creation has been expecting since Jesus ascended into heaven. Finally, the teachings also make us effective in the work of the ministry, irrespective of the denominations in which we are, so that uh, together as a body of Christ, we can be much more effective at bringing many more humans into God's eternal plan for their lives. This has been an amazing way we started with yesterday's answering questions. And by the grace of God, we're able to take a look at two questions bothering on the subject of um, ministering unto the Lord and the meaning of our inheritances in Christ. If you did miss that episode, make sure you go back today. It's on our YouTube and watch it right after this one. We're going to move forward and look at today's question. We got a question all the way from Cameroon from um, a sister, Gang Sidwine. I pray I got your name right. Sister Gang Sidwine is asking, how can one meditate effectively on a scriptural truth to achieve the intended results. Oh, praise God, hallelujah. I just love this question. How can one meditate effectively on a scriptural truth to achieve the intended results? Shall we pray? Father, I thank you. I bless you because you are bringing forth unlimited virtues for every single human challenge presented before you in those that are watching and reading and listening to this episode. I hereby say to you, receive in the name of Jesus, all you sons and people of God. Let it be cleansing in the bodies of diseases. Let it be enlightenment in your spirits. Let it be maturity from your current level of growth to the next one. Father, we thank you that we are never the same. In Jesus' name, amen. How can one meditate effectively on a scriptural truth to achieve the intended results from Sister Gang, Sidwine, in Cameroon? And just before we look at um, the response to the question, I'd like you to take note that if you are a Christian and you are really serious with going further with Jesus, you have to really learn the art of meditation. 
There are a lot of good things in the scriptures that religion and Satan has hijacked. And they have so hijacked these things that when you are teaching them even in the Christian faith, people think you've gone off maybe into Eastern religions or New Age or those kind of things. But these things are scriptural. One of them is the art of meditation. I can see possibly how a son of God can walk in the fullness of God if you don't meditate in the God kind. My, you, can, you can't, that's why a lot of people are living so far below and are struggling with life on the earth because they've left the communion of the God kind. And it takes meditation, bouts of meditation. Anyway, we are not here to talk about the importance of meditation. Let's look at the question. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15 is our main scripture for today. 1 Timothy 4, 15. And it says that, from the King James Version, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. The word profiting means your advancement. your expansion, your increase. He says, when you meditate on the things of the scripture and you give yourself completely to them, he says, there's no way people will not see your advancement. Your advancement will be apparent to everyone. So if you are not making advancement in your life, it's most likely you are not meditating enough. And that is why our sister's question comes in. How can one effectively meditate on a scriptural truth to achieve the intended results? I'm going to take it in three major blocks of thoughts. Thought number one, let's look at the ultimate picture of meditation. When we talk about meditation, what does it seek to ultimately make you? What is the goal of meditation? We said here that to effectively meditate on a scriptural truth so that you can achieve its intended goal means to arrive at a place of thinking enough through that scripture in the light of present truth until you assume its reality in your thoughts, in your speech, and in your actions. When you think through a scriptural truth enough in the light of present truth, until you assume the reality of that truth in your thoughts, in your speech, and in your actions, Meditation would have been realized. So when you say, I want to effectively meditate on a truth, this is your ultimate picture. It means I want to think through it enough in the light of present truth. And I, I know why I'm stressing on that. We've taught you a lot on present truth. The whole Bible is a message from God. But there are portions of the Bible that communicate to people of a certain age. And every son or daughter of God must be able to discover the present truth for your generation. This is not trying to make some portions of the Bible irrelevant. The same Bible tells us that everything was written for our learning. So we can learn a lot from every area of the Bible. But not everything in the Bible is for your current practice and experience. And I often ask this question. I don't see any way that maybe it's church day and people are carrying goats and lambs to the temple. And yet when you read the Bible, you find places where people of God were commanded to bring goats and lambs. Why are we not doing so? It is because we are no more in that dispensation. But we read that and we learn the principles of God that were applied. So it's your responsibility 
to work with this Holy Spirit that you are filled with and let him direct your heart to present truth. Then your meditation of scriptures is done in the light of present truth. And when you meditate on a scripture in the light of present truth until you assume the reality of that scripture in your thoughts. In other words, the way you think is according to the truth of that scripture. You assume the reality of that scripture in your speech. In other words, the way you speak is according to the reality of that scripture. And you begin to assume the reality of that scripture in your actions. In other words, the way you act is according to the reality of that scripture. Then meditation on that scripture will have been brought to a completion. Are you following this? So when we're talking about meditation, that is the ultimate goal. Get into a place where you have thought enough through a scripture, according to present truth, until you assume its reality in your thoughts, in your speech, and in your actions. This is the picture. Are you catching it? So for instance, um, if the Bible says that, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospered. And you want to meditate on that scripture. I will show you the steps. And you go through the meditative processes until you get to a place where you think being in health. You talk being in health. And you act being in health. Then you have effectively meditated on that scripture. But when you think on that scripture and the next day you are still talking, oh, I don't know why I'm sick. I don't know why diseases are coming. You haven't finished meditating yet. Keep on meditating. Because your thought and your speech are not consistent. Say that, I wish that you be in health. When you arrive at a state of being in health, in your thoughts and your speech, you act accordingly. Are you following that? That was just an example. So the first thought on how to effectively uh, meditate on a scriptural truth for the intended result is to know that your ultimate goal is to get a place where your thoughts are according to the reality of that scripture, your speech is according to the reality of that scripture, and your actions are according to the reality of that scripture. Until you have arrived there, you have not effectively meditated. Keep meditating. I catch it. It's important for us to say that because someone can say, who oh, have been meditating on that scripture, and yet he is thinking contrary to that scripture. He is talking contrary to that scripture. What he means by having meditation is that, oh, from time to time, that scripture has been coming to my mind. No, you have not been meditating or you have not effectively meditated yet. Are you catching this? I will take you through the process. But knowing where you are going is very important. Because you may choose to settle somewhere and think that, oh, I've meditated when you have not. If you don't know what having meditated effectively means, you will not know when you get there. And you will not know when you are not there. So what is the ultimate picture of one who has effectively meditated on a scriptural truth? One who has thought through it enough in line with present truth until he begins to live in the reality of that scripture in his thoughts, his speech, and his actions. That is why you see how sometimes we say some things and you may look at us on the physical and think that we are lying. But we are not lying. We are only thinking and talking according to the realities of scriptures we meditated on. And if you watch us long enough, you will see that we are displaying that result. The Bible said that advancement will appear to all. It is not possible to effectively meditate on a scripture and not, not have its results manifest in your life. So that is the ultimate picture of meditation. I'm going to go on a short but when I come back, we'll take a look at the second and the third thoughts in the response to this question. I'll be right back after this break. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we are looking at the question, how can one meditate effectively on a scriptural truth to achieve its intended results? We said that we're going to look at it um, in three thoughts. Thought number one is the ultimate picture of an effective meditation. When you have effectively meditated on a scripture, you would arrive at a place that having thought thoroughly through it in line with script, uh, present truth, you are now thinking, talking, and acting in the reality of its truth. Second thought is um, to describe to you the objective process 
of meditation. So for you that you are doing the meditation, how, how is the process like to you? What should you be doing that you know that you are meditating? Are you catching it? So the second thought is the objective process of meditation. We'll put it that. Meditation is the spiritual exercise of ascending from a person's current state of spiritual consciousness into the position of a scriptural truth in his consciousness. Oh boy, let me read it to you again. These are not uh, English language manipulations. I'm speaking to you from the experience of dwelling in the Godhead and meditation. Meditation is a spiritual exercise, and I'll explain, of ascending from a person's current state of spiritual consciousness into the position of a scriptural truth in his consciousness. Let me take you, let me give you an example. Maybe I should just read the scripture to show you. Right. Um, let me take 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, and show you something. It says that, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Now, when I started off in my work with God, I started off, like many of you, having struggles with making ends meet. Especially when I um, resigned from the medical practice. Sometimes, even water to run in the house would be a challenge. Diapers for children, those were challenges. But I knew that this scripture was true. That in Christ, I was made rich. But then, maybe if I was about to pay a utility bill, I felt, hey, I'm using all the money. I felt I wasn't, there was not going to be enough left for the family. But I kept meditating on this scripture. I will always see this scripture very high from, from where I was. And then I'll try to ascend and, and, and be in a place where I am that rich person Christ has made me. Who lacks nothing? So I kept on thinking on this scripture. Until I rose up in my consciousness from one who lacks. One who is conscious of, hey, if I use this money to pay for water bill, I will not have enough to pay for light bill. If I use this money to pay for light bill, I will not have enough to, to, to service my car. So by meditating on it, I move from being insufficient conscious, lack conscious, and all those things, to a place where I began to see the rich me that Christ made in himself. So when I moved to that level, now, situations didn't change immediately at home. There were still situations where maybe I didn't have enough money for that. But I just couldn't say I was poor. <laughs> I just couldn't say I, I can't do it. And I come to church and I tell them, we are doing this, we are doing that. And it's as if, but where is the money? To them, the speech was sounding some way, but to me, I had so matured in my consciousness, I had so ascended in my consciousness that I was now thinking and talking and acting in line with the scripture to do. Nobody could see anything. Are you following this? That is what meditation means to you, the meditator. Then, not long after that, I'll say this and we'll get it done with ease. That way. But everything I said, we'll, we'll get them done, but sometimes it took time. Then, as time went on, it became easier and easier until where we are today and where we are going tomorrow. It is the same thing in health. When I knew that Christ took away every disease and it was illegal, oh my, I'll feel sick and I'll go to that scripture, but it starts you are healed. It looks so far. I kept on meditating until I ascended to a place where I knew that every disease was gone. Yes, in those early days, I could still be struck by a disease. But I, I just couldn't think sick. I couldn't think that, I, you understand? Why well, I had ascended in my consciousness to the reality of that scripture. That is meditation. 
So if you want to know what it means to you to have meditated, you have meditated where you have ascended from your current level of consciousness of the situation to the level of consciousness that the scripture talks about. Because the scripture does not talk according to your feelings. Scriptures talk according to what Christ has made you. So the Bible says that whatsoever is born of God has overcome the world. And yet you feel defeated in every area. God is not talking to you according to your feelings. He's talking to you according to what Christ did and what he made you. So what do you do? Ascend from where you are in your consciousness to where the scripture says you are in your consciousness. That is what meditation means. It's an ascension from your current state of consciousness to assume the level of consciousness of his particular scripture. Are you following this? Now, I have just a few minutes, but now let me bring you into, it looks like all that I've said is, uh, is like a lot of theory, but that is where the meat is. When you begin to uh, see work in the, in the community of the Godhead, but what are the steps that lead you to here? I've taught you over and again. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according as it is written, and thou shalt make thy way prosperous. The word for meditate, the Hebrew word is Hagar. And I taught you over and again, but I'm going to repeat it again, that it may do many things, but you can summarize them practically. So these are the practical steps. So this is the final thought of today's answer. The first thought was ultimate goal. Second thought was the objective process. And the final thought is the practical steps. Step number one, you take a scripture, you ponder on that scripture. What do we mean by ponder? It means interrogate, question, brood on, contemplate. Oh, okay. He was made poor that I might be rich. Ah, how? How does that apply to me? You ask questions. You are sitting alone, you are asking these questions. Not asking from a, a, a pessimistic perspective or a beggarly perspective, but you are asking a question, looking for something. You are opening yourself up for the Holy Ghost to interact with you. So you interrogate. I mean, you ponder. You contemplate. In the positive, knowing that, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking on how this relates to my situation. Yeah, yeah, so how? God, how does it? Then you think, you think, you brood. You, you can be brooding for days and weeks and months on a particular thing. That's the first thing you do. Ponder. If you just uh, flash through scriptures, you are not meditating, you are just scanning. Meditation is intentional. You think, not in the sense of worrying, but in the sense of searching for answers in it as far as it relates with your situation. So you ponder. Number two is you imagine. Now, you are pondering on a scripture. Secondly, you are imagining based on the scripture. So when you ponder enough, you begin to see certain things, images in, your, in, your, in the eyes of your understanding. So let me go back to the Second Corinthians 8, 9. In case you are struggling financially, and the Bible says that he was made poor that he might be rich. You want to get to a place that you know yourself as that rich guy or that rich young lady or whatever you may be. So what do you do? You, so how, how does this work? But I'm not physically even working. Or this, this is what is going on. This I'm a bill. Well, how can he say he has made me rich? How am I rich? I can't see that. Well, you're asking these questions, okay? Then you begin to imagine yourself as the one that, oh yeah, you are, you are more than enough. You are paying the water bill, the light bill, the dad. You, are, you begin to imagine based on the scripture. You don't bring in, fan, I mean, uh, uh, some worldly fantastic imaginations into the scripture. You imagine based on the scripture because you are going to create by that scripture. God is not partnering with worldly imaginations. He partners with biblical imaginations. So you ponder, you imagine. Then the third step is when you begin to imagine, you move on to muttering. When you begin to talk to yourself, it's like I see you are soliloquizing. Boy, I'm loaded. Boy, I'm rich. <laughs> oh, I'm full of health. You are talking this to yourself. Because now, the imaginations have filled you. And what you are seeing in your mind's eye, you cannot but to say to yourself. So you are amongst a group of people and I say, oh, Charlie, life is hard. You say, no, no, no. In your mind, you know, no, not me. Not me. You are muttering to yourself in your prayer. It's part of meditation. Then you get to a place where you boldly speak it out. You cannot talk to your friends and tell them I'm rich. They say, ah, but you are not even able to make that contribution for that funeral and you are calling yourself rich. Then you smile. I'm still rich. 
It is gone beyond talking to yourself alone in your prayer room or in your, in your closet. It has now gone to a level where you are talking outside everywhere. People may not see the evidence initially, but what are you doing? You are bringing yourself to a place where you think, you talk, you act in line with scriptural truth. Get this message over and again. Listen to these three blocks. The ultimate picture of meditating on a scripture is to bring you to a place where you have thought through a scriptural truth enough in line with present truth until you are working in the reality in terms of your thought, speech, and actions. What is the objective process to you? What does it mean? It means ascending from your current state of reality to assume a, a, the, the reality of the scripture in your consciousness. What are the practical steps? Ponder, imagine, mutter, and speak out loud. Shall we pray? Father, I cause a total turnaround in the lives of all participants in this episode and that will participate. And the earth is changed because of this truth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, have you been watching us and you have not yet received Jesus? What are you waiting for? It is something you can never dodge. According to Ephesians 1, 4 and 5, Jesus was factored into your life before you were born. Jesus is not one of the religious leaders you can choose. I'm okay, uh, this person, that person, that person, and Jesus. So I choose Jesus. No. Jesus is not a religious leader. He is life. If you miss him, you have not missed a religion. You have missed appointment with destiny. This is not to frighten you. This is to let you know how serious this is. I know Christianity has been made a religion for a long time. But this is about your life. Jesus died. He reconciled you to God. He has made life available for you to receive and you're born again. Just receive it. How do you receive it? Believe he died and rose again. And that made him reconcile the whole world to God. And believe he rose from the dead. And made eternal life available and declare him Lord of your life. By saying this after me. Say, Jesus, I believe you came into this world and died. I believe you were raised from the dead. I believe you reconciled the whole world to the Father. I believe there is eternal life now because of your resurrection. Jesus, I receive this eternal life by declaring Jesus is Lord of my life. I'm born again. Hallelujah. If I die with all your heart, truly I'm born again. Make sure you contact us and it will help you to grow. I'm surely going to come here again in the next episode as we take a look at another question. Till then, life is good. Enjoy. If you just got born again today, and would like to fellowship with us, call our numbers displayed and connect with any of our new creatures fellowship branches nearest to you. Dambai Pasa in Kwantan Takrade, Kaswa Lagon, Tachiman Tema New Town, Ashama New Town, Tema Ashaman, Gulf City, Nungwa. In Konya, Kolegono Tree speaking, Kolegono Gas speaking, Kolegono English speaking, the Multinational Church or our virtual church online. We will be glad to fellowship with you. Do call us. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bendan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website finalglobalmovement.org Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Benden. Life is good. Enjoy.